Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Today is 3rd November 2019, 20th Sunday after Trinity. I am glad to come your way this morning with this message, Fear in Slaves. But I want to counsel you. Never meet with people, other people, before you meet God. Always allow the Word of God to be your daily fountain. The Word of God is supernatural in origin. The Word of God is infallible in authority. The Word of God is inspired in totality. It's authentic, it's automatic. Is authoritative. If you are informed by this word, whatever you do from today henceforth, you will perform. But when you lack inspiration from this word, definitely you will aspire. Bow your heads and let us pray. Unto you, gracious God, we come this morning. We thank you for the gift of the day. We thank you for bringing us unto this new month, the 11th month in 2019. We are grateful for your guidance and leading from January till now. Thank you for the blood that makes atonement for us. We pray this morning that you will open our eyes again to behold wondrous things out of your word. Inspire us to lay hold on them and be obedient to your instructions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our devotional text this morning is taken from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. Luke, chapter 19, reading from verse 11. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, A certain noble man went into a far country, to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, Do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants, to whom he had given the money, to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little have authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. Then another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept put away in a handkerchief, for I feared you. Because you are an austere man, you collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then do you not put my money in the bank? That at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him, and give it to him who has ten minas. But they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. For I say to you, that to everyone who has, will be given. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. 
But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our topic today says, Fear in Slaves. One of the satanic strategies to hinder us from maximizing our potential is to inject fear into our life. When we allow fear to take hold of us, failure will be inevitable. Because fear will magnify our task or problem, challenges above our ability or potential. Failures in life are fear-oriented. Fear is slaves. Our text narrates the story of a nobleman who distributed minas to his servants with a definite instruction. See verse 13 of our text. Do business till I come. The first two servants got the challenge, worked diligently against all odds to ensure that they become productive with what they were given. The last, for the fear of failure, fear of the austere master, kept the mina and became unproductive. At the return of the master, he was condemned and the mina taken away from him. The scripture is right. In Proverbs 29, verse 25, the fear of man brings near, but whosoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. The fundamental problem of the failed servant was, one, the fear of failure, and consequently, punishment from his master. He never saw his God-given ability to succeed. The master equipped him for success, but fear robbed him of it. The same is true of many Christians today. Fear of losing admission. Fear of losing contract. Fear of losing employment or failure in business has made many to fail to take both steps. They see man as determinant of their future and not God. Child of God, do you know that God has equipped you for greatness in life? Are you aware that you are not born empty? Do you know that you are created because you are needed? You are not here on planet Earth just to fulfill census. Nobody is better than you. God has loaded you with potentials, talents, and abilities. No wonder the scripture says in Psalm 139 verse 4, I use Young's literary translation. He renders thus. I confess thee because that with wonders I have been distinguished. Wonderful are thy works, and my soul is knowing it well. Whosoever you be this morning, know it that God has deposited greatness in you. Where you are or who you are now is not the final picture of who you will be. That grace in you that talent you have, that skill you must have acquired, may be the ladder that will lead you to the zenith of your dream. Refuse to be enslaved by fear. I said, refuse to be enslaved by fear. Fear is a foundation upon which one builds a house of failure. Never permit fear to be a graveyard to your talent destiny, and future. Fear is said to be a kind of quick stimulation that makes one change behavior. A child was once asked, define fear. And he defined fear as thus, F-E-A-R, forgetting everything and wrong. Forgetting the future. Forget the dream. Forget where you're going. Forget the vision you have, run away, never attempt, never dare. Another person was asked to define fear, and he defined fear as thus, false evidence appearing real. What you are or what you will be in life is a function of how you handle your fear factor. I tell you the truth. Until fear is conquered, faith will not be appeased. The psalmist has this to say, 
in Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Apostle Paul acknowledged this when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Do you know that your five loaves of bread and two fish, insignificant to feed the, a crowd, may be the needed ingredients God will use to bless many people? Brethren, as we await the second coming of our master, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, let us make use of every of our opportunity. Are you in leadership position, both political or in religious sector? Are you in business of any kind? Are you a student? Let us do kingdom business. Reach out to the lost world and expand God's kingdom. Therefore, arise today, pray, and do business for the Lord with what you have. Please, don't allow your inability to destroy your capability. Don't live in your situation. Live in your revelation. Don't live in your fear. Live in your faith. How can we overcome fear and ease enslavement? Number one, always remember, it is not what you have, but what you do with what you have that makes the difference. Number two, never be a prisoner of your past. Nobody on planet Earth is rich enough to buy his or her past. Your past is just a lesson, not a life sentence. Successful people believe that mistake is a feedback. Number three, guide and guard your mind. The Bible says out of your mind comes the issues of life. And remember, Whatever controls your mind controls your world because your mentality is your reality. Failure or success in life is a product of your decision and not your condition. Someone has this to say, sheep don't sink because of the waters around them, but they sink because of the waters that get into them. Therefore, I urge you this morning, renew your mind. Equip your mind Reload your mind with I can do mentality. Number four, hold on to your dream. Your destiny is bigger than your history. You are created for a divine purpose. Church Hill says, Continuous effort, not strength, nor intelligence, is key to unlock one's potential. Therefore, I urge you, maintain focus. Even if you can't trace him now, trust him. His silence does not mean his absence. You can still make it to the top. Always remember this. Gary has no advert, but he sells more than Indomie. Remember again, today is Sunday. Worship is a debt you owe God. Therefore, I urge you, be in church today. God bless you. Let us pray. Thou help of the helpless. Give us grace not to be slothful, but to fulfill our God-given destiny in the land of the living. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.